This is the Work Smart Hypnosis Podcast, session number 165, Kate Beaters on Tapping into Breakthroughs. Welcome to the Work Smart Hypnosis Podcast with Jason Lynette, your professional resource for hypnosis training and outstanding business success. Here's your host, Jason Lynette. Welcome back. As always, it's Jason Lynette here with a phenomenal conversation to share with you with Kate Beaters out of the Boston area. And Kate is somebody that I first interacted with actually last year, October 2017, at the Canadian Hypnosis Conference, getting to interact briefly, then getting to know each other by ways of the wonders of uh, Facebook and chatting on the phone a few times. And it's about time we have her here on this program. Uh, Kate is somebody who's a bit of an insight as well as comfortably a bit of an outsider that uh, interacts within some of the hypnotic community, yet for the most part isn't necessarily a hypnotist herself. You're going to hear her story of transitioning out of a career in corporate, which was uh, sort of marked by how much time she could spend away from it, and then getting into her own personal breakthroughs by way of tapping EFT protocols and then personal coaching and now fully transitioning years ago and now living the life of helping folks like us to get out there and become those rock star entrepreneurs and really help to create an amazing difference out there for people. So if you find yourself perhaps in that framework where maybe you're still kind of getting started, maybe you're still chasing one more certificate after another in terms of getting started, you're going to hear some really inspirational themes in this conversation of just really understanding the value that we present to our clients, understanding the real value that we're creating in their lives and that ability to be, well, properly compensated for that. And that's a good thing, both for the client as well as for yourself. I'd encourage you to head over to her website, katebeaters.com. That's spelled B-E-E-D-E-R-S. Of course, links to everything in the show notes over at worksmarthypnosis.com. We'll link to some of her upcoming retreats, trainings, as well as her recently released uh, Go or Don't Go book, which you can find on Amazon on her website as well. All the details, once again, over at katebeaters.com. This is going to be one I promise you're going to want to listen to a couple of times because again, some of the takeaways of putting work in action, rethinking the models of how we approach our clients and just being willing to have that conversation, not just with our clients, as Kate would say, but also that conversation within yourself in terms of the value that you really present to people and just that motivation to get out there and do even greater work. You know, on a similar theme, I'd encourage you as well to head over to hypnoticbusinesssystems.com. This is my entire digital access to my hypnosis business training, everything from running group sessions to increasing your rates, the language patterns to do that appropriately, as well as some of the incredible things you can pull off online in terms of getting in front of the right community. We all need to be thinking much bigger. So whether it's folks like me, folks like Kate, or many of the other great guests that have been on this program as well, go out there and make a huge difference. So with that, let's jump directly into this phenomenal conversation. This is session number 165, Kate Beaters on Tapping into Breakthroughs. So, so what happened for me, just, just a little bit of background, Jason, is um, previously I've been in corporate for about, I don't know, um, I don't know, 16 years or so doing business development. And remember when the con- economy started tanking? Yes. And um, yeah, <laughs> we can't forget that. And um, first my company merged, then it got, um, the, then our company got acquired. And as a result, I had been a very, very successful business development executive. I was making a pile of money. I had like so much cash. I mean, that, I mean, just expendable income, right? Because it was a totally different time. Um, and so anyways, um, when I had this time af- after I was laid off, and I'm trying to figure out like what the heck do I want to do? And, you know, companies that are similar to me um, were, you know, were interviewing me. But you know how you kind of feel like I just don't want to do this anymore? Yeah. And, and that's kind of how I felt. And I've been learning about this technique, um, tapping, you know, e- emotional freedom techniques. And, um, 
I started taking some uh, classes at this. Um, if, if you, I don't know if you're familiar with Omega Institute, which is Elizabeth Lesser um, had, had co-founded. It's in the Berkshires, and mm-hmm. it's the largest adult learning center in um, in North America. And they've had all sorts of experts come, and I went and took one of her courses. And um, what she talks about in this is, I'm giving you kind of a little bit of a longer answer, but it'll, it'll totally make sense, is that she talks about this this thing that when, when bad things happen, you know, whether it's a job loss, whether it's a death, whether it's um, um, a transition, you know, some, you know, something could be a breakup, whatever, you know, but something bad, um, typically unexpected, you have this choice and you either have this choice to say, okay, I'm going to try to put everything back together just how is how it was, meaning, okay, I'm just going to go find another job just like I was doing before, or else you have this opportunity because you're being broken open to say like, Hey, what do I want to create here? That's, that's more aligned with, with where I, I want to be. And so I I never had even experienced even a thought process like that because I came from a very provincial mindset where it's like you just keep doing what you're doing, right? You know, and and you were successful, go find another job or you just keep being successful. And um, I just loved what she was teaching. And I had this this thought in my head wondering, like, is it possible to have to be happy and be successful or is it trade off? Is it that? You're just one or the other. Like for me, when I was in corporate, I took a zillion vacations and it was all about working hard so I could go on vacation. And so that's kind of what led me. <laughs> Let me rephrase that. Working hard so you could leave. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. And I would, and I would take... I mean, I would take sometimes four to six vacations a week and I mean a year rather and not the little itty bitty like, you know, let me just drive somewhere for an hour type of vacation for a long weekend. I would literally go away like to the Caribbean for, you know, for 10 days, two weeks and, you know, in, in luxury vacations and have a really great time. So I was, I was busting my butt, you know, I'd be at work at six in the morning and coming in on weekends, but then I'd quick go, you know, after a couple months, I'd go on another vacation and I figured there had to be some type of compromise there. And so that's really what kind of led me, I'm what they call an accidental entrepreneur, that um, none of the jobs I I interviewed with did I feel I could find that. And so I just said, I'm just going to try this. And, you know, initially it was all about tapping and, and not really sure where it would go. But I, I loved I loved the technique. I was I found I was very, very good at it. And I was getting transformational results. And my, my family thought I was crazy. Um, you know, they wanted me to have the traditional job, right? Because, you know, entrepreneurship still hadn't really, even though it's obviously big, you know, they, they wanted me, you know, in their mind, it's like, have a safe job, you know, have a job where you have a title, you have a business card and you get your benefits and, you, you know, you know what I mean? So this was totally accidental, not the way you're supposed to do it. And, um, that that's really how it all started. And I, I would not trade any of the struggles, I would not trade any of the hardships because there certainly is them in, in um, entrepreneurship as well as transformational work um, for anything. And so that's kind of how it started. Yeah, I'd share that's part of why I'd reached out to you to, to have you on here, that you and I met briefly at the Canadian Hypnosis Convention. And the, to look at the perspective of taking even the most of the audience that listens to the Work Smart Hypnosis podcast, most of them are in that hypnosis community. There's, yeah. there's a through line as in a lot of our community also does the EFT also does the tapping, Mm -hmm. but to look at the perspective of thinking bigger about where we can take this, that so often people are, and there's nothing wrong with this, mind you, that they're satisfied to stick within that one-to-one mindset and that becomes it. And I know that you do a lot of speaking, you do a lot of retreats. Um, So looking at it in terms of bringing that transformation to, to a bigger audience that Correct me here, it may not necessarily be the same hypnosis process that a lot of my community does, yet still it's that transformational change that it's getting someone in the right mindset to let the techniques then become effective. Yeah, you know, and, and, and the whole thing is too, and just, and just a little little background too, that um, I, I, Jason, I don't even know if you remember this, but um, well, that was a that was a two day event. I spoke on the first day. You spoke on the second day, and I happened to to sneak in to listen to you, you know. And, and we didn't know each other, and I, I just really liked you, and I really liked what you had to say. I really liked your energy, and here you are. You're talking about you know hypnotists and do this and that, and I'm going okay. Even though I'm not a hypnotist, I'm still going, <laughs> I just really liked what you were saying. You had a lot. Oh, thank of, you. <laughs> yeah, you welcome. You had a lot of charisma, and I enjoyed it. And, and like I said, it it really had. No, so back to your point about being more open to things, and it really had nothing to do with me. And then I, I got your email address. 
address somehow. And I just sent you an email saying, I really like what you had to say. You probably thought I was like some, some groupie. <laughs> but, but I was just like, I, I liked you. And so here, here it is, you know, months later, we've kind of connected and we've talked many times over the phone and, and shared information and all that. So just, just to let everybody know, you never know just by reaching out and just kind of let, you know, when, when someone does really, um, you know, you really enjoy what they have to say or they interest you or whatever. I mean, you know, seriously, reach out to that person, send them an email because, you know, you never know what kind of connections you can make. And, and that's part of the that's part of the transformation, too. Right. Right. I'd say that's a key takeaway that, you know, I remember back to going to different conventions, whether it's within the hypnosis community, whether it's some of the marketing events that I go to and that realization that some of the most successful people are often the most giving that yep. they're willing to have that conversation to share the knowledge. And I don't want to drop the name of the story, but it's where I'm at this major convention. It's outside of uh, these communities. And I'm hanging out in the restaurant area with this guy and we're just chatting. And then suddenly, hey, I got to go do this thing. It's like, oh, damn, he's the keynote. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and it was me not knowing who, someone who's a big player in the social media marketing world and just the willingness just to have the conversation, make the connection. And you know, again, to be open to more possibilities rather than kind of hold off to our own and going, well, this is how I do it. This is how it works. Exactly. Exactly. You know, and, and, and that's a whole thing. And, and back to, you know, uh, you know, whether it's, it's hypnotism or tapping or whatever that, you know, I can only speak from my experience, but, you know, working with all the entrepreneurs I have is that I think for most of us, when, when we do gravitate towards um, some methodology, it's because we've had our own personal transformations in it and it just catches our heart. That, that's the only way I can describe it. Um, that's how I feel about tapping. You know, it really, really caught my heart and I just fell in love with the technique. And, and that's why for me, it's, it's my, it's my, um, it's, it's in my blood now at this point. So. Yeah. Was there, was there a personal change attached to that? I, I had so many and, and, and again, you know, I don't know if, if, you know, if you can resonate, but I'm sure some people of your audience can, is that, I, you know, I'm from Boston. We're really super provincial here. I mean, Jason, I went to an event uh, about a year ago and they were talking about how they're bringing meditation into the workforce and they were all excited. And I'm thinking like, yeah, like meditation. Hello. It's only been around like how many, you know, like, um, Boston is super, super provincial. So when I first started doing tapping, um, you know, I spent tens of thousands of dollars being really highly certified. I've, I've been on you know, big telesummits with half a million people listening to me, you know, as, as a feature presenter. But when I first started doing it in Boston, I swear people's heads would start spinning <laughs> around because they were like, you know, at least hypnotism people, you know, they know about, they may not know a lot about it, but you know, whether they've seen it in movies or something, I mean, it, it, you know, at least they know the word, but tapping, oh my gosh, people, people's, I thought their eyes would pop out of their heads. Um, and, but, but I had, I had so many transformations just little by little by little. And, uh, you know, um, for me, the way I, I actually discovered it or it discovered me is I was actually on one of those vacations I was telling you about. And I was in the Caribbean actually coming out of a meditation class, speaking of meditation. And the instructor had this amazing voice. I mean, seriously, he, he should be doing voiceovers. His voice was so beautiful. And I was complimenting him at the end of the meditation class. And I, I you know, I just said how wonderful it was. And it was so relaxing. And I was kind of joking around. And I said, if only you could help me give up eating ice cream. And he's like looking at me like I had two heads, like, what are you talking about? And I said, well, I said, I live in Boston. And I said, in Boston, you can get ice cream, you know, year round, which is really unusual for, for any city. And plus, it's like on every street corner. Again, very unusual. And in high school, my best friend and I worked at an ice cream shop. I love ice cream. And ice cream's not good for you. You know, it's all sugar and fat and cream and all this other kind of stuff. And not that I, I had a weight problem, but still, it's just ice cream's just not, you know, great to eat a lot of. And so he said, he said, he goes, I, I learned this technique recently. He said, can I try it on you? So you know how on vacation, Jason, you know how you try new things, you know, new experiences and new, um, you know, maybe new foods or new adventures, whatever. And so I said, sure, you know, what the heck? And he does this technique. Again, I know, don't know what it's called, don't know how it's worked. And within a really short time, I just had no interest in eating ice cream. <laughs> You know, I had as much interest in eating ice cream as I did, like, you know, the, the, the laptop I'm talking to you on, you know, just nothing. And I was like, okay, this is cool. I said, but I want to go back to the beach. So thank you very much. And, um, you know, didn't think much about it. 
And then, so this was eight years ago. And then, um, you know, so I was working corporate and I got back home from my vacation about, you know, about a week later and my boss called me on the phone and, um, I had gone to work for him like eight months earlier. And you know what a deal breaker is? Like he, he had hired me and said, look, if you come to work with me, I'm going to give you these three things. So they were like deal breakers. And so I left my previous company, went to work for him. Well, he calls me on this, on the phone and he says, you know, all those things I promised you, I no longer can do. Oh, wow. I know. So, you know, how you're sitting there and, and, you know, I'll kind of say very politely, I was like, well, you know, I won't say what I was thinking, but I was <laughs> imagine, and I was really, really angry at him because here, like I said, I left my previous company because he promised me all this gold. And, um, he said, let's talk tomorrow. Come in the office tomorrow. We'll talk. So I, I called this guy. I contacted this guy over and I said, can we connect over Skype? I said, I don't know what your technique is. I said, I have no idea what it is, how it works, what it's even called. I said, but, but can you just help me? Cause I have to meet with my boss tomorrow. And I said, I'm just so angry at him. And I, I just can't be angry when I go talk to him. So eight years ago, Skype was horrible. Skype was mm -hmm. constantly disconnecting. It was echoey. It was staticky. It was just absolutely horrible. So he did, he, he, we still, we connected over Skype again with all these problems. And in a really short time, all my anger against my boss just dissipated. I was like, wow, this is really cool. And I met with my boss the next day. And, um, you know, instead of me being angry, because which is way how normally you would be. I don't know about you, Jason, but I would be angry. It's like, hey, you promised me this stuff and now you're not delivering. And instead I was like, hey, what's going on? And he told me, and we just had this really nice conversation and he didn't want me to leave. And so he ended up giving me more money, giving me some more, more vacation time. <laughs> <laughs> so, Sounds familiar. <laughs> That's familiar, yeah. So I said, okay, I'll stay. And and the thing is, is that honestly, Jason, if that hadn't happened, I would have been like ready to to like you know be angry at him, which would have made him really you know defensive, and it would have just been a really bad conversation. So instead, it ended up being a win win for both of us. And then over the next couple of months, um, I just kept contacting this guy over Skype, and he helped me with. Um, you know, uh, going on dates with jerks or you name it. I, I mean, anything. He just would help me. I'm like, wow, this is really cool. And then finally I said, okay, this is getting ridiculous. I keep Skyping this guy. I need to start learning. And that's what led me into becoming an expert in the technique. And I, although when I wrote my, my book that just came out, I did actually mention Darren. He, he's the fellow who helped me and I did acknowledge him because without that, I never would have, I, you know, again, being from Boston, I never in a million years would have ever have thought of learning any kind of mindset technique. Yeah. So looking at that personal story, then leveraging that to, to working with others, I'm curious to ask, what was that transition of leaving, leaving the corporate and then becoming again, I love that phrase of the accidental entrepreneur. Yeah, it was, it, so it was very challenging. Cause I think like most of us, you know, most entrepreneurs, we go for the one-to-one -one initially and that's what you do. And, you know, you end up like a lot of us who are, are, are in the helping professions, we end up being uncomfortable talking about money. We give away our services. We do trades. We do discounts. Mm -hmm. And the, the problem is, is that unless you're independently wealthy or have a sugar daddy or, <laughs> you know, you, you're, married, you're married or sugar mommy, whatever, you know, you're married to somebody who, who's paying the bills that only lasts for so long. And um, I, you know, end up hiring coaches to help me with all that. And as a result, because that totally that that was my make it or break it. Otherwise, you know, you wouldn't be talking to me, Jason. I would be back working in corporate and saying, okay, it is what it is. Um, and because I learned how to, how to charge what I was worth, I learned to understand my value. I learned how to do all those things that that really kind of led me on this whole, this whole, um, mission of just being able to help more entrepreneurs and, and people do all this to be able to show up in their brilliance. That's, that's really what my whole message is, is really, helping people understand and show up in their brilliance so they're playing a much bigger game. So to look at that that personal breakthrough, so that experience of someone overcoming that barrier of, again, I've, I've seen you posting on Facebook about this too, around the people stuck in the, uh, in, in the trades, stuck in the discount yep. model. Yep. Uh, what is it that you'd say, just to completely overgeneralize it perhaps, <laughs> what would yeah. you say is often that pattern that people need to realize? in order to really break yeah. through and really start to, uh, and again, there's a benefit to the client as well, because we're getting a bigger buy-in from them. We're getting them emotionally invested in the process. Exactly. I'd, I'd say that yeah. so often we owe it to our clients to be successful in what we do. Well, in the fact that if we can do that, because if we give it away, then we're kind of making ourselves smaller, right? Mm -hmm. So, 
a, a couple things are going on is one is when you're able to charge what you're worth, it's about understanding your own value. And when we tend to give it away or do trades or discounts, you know, and, and sure in the very, very beginning, you know, let's say the first couple of months of your business, okay, it's, that's kind of normal. You're just, you know, getting your, your sea legs. Yeah, but, getting that comfort, getting the, getting yeah. the knowledge that, oh yeah, I actually can do this, which, which it, is important. It, it, <laughs> Yeah, exactly, exactly. But after that, it's really about understanding your value. But what happens so often, and this happened to me, is I took it personally. And this happens to every entrepreneur I teach, is that when someone says no, it's almost like a stab in your heart. And then you start doubting yourself, you start doubting your ability. And because you know you have this gift, it's just like, okay, I'm just going to do it for free or or let them do this for me or let them, you know, declutter my house for me or, or whatever the heck they, they do, you know. Um, and then the problem is, is that when, you, you know, what happened in my story is that I, I was, you know, doing it so cheaply and giving it away and all sorts of stuff that when I would start hearing from people about the amazing results they were getting. It's like, Kate, because of you, you know, now I've doubled my income or now I'm making an extra $5,000 a month or now I have this opportunity, now I have that opportunity. And, you know, from the healer helper part of me, I should be really happy for them. But honestly, Jason, what was going on in the beginning is that I started getting angry. Because I was like, that's not how money works. You know, money should be, money's a form of energy and should be traded reciprocally. So if you're getting these amazing benefits and yet you're not paying me, that's not right. And so back to your point. I think that's a big message that a lot of this audience needs to hear that, you know, uh, there's value in the change that we're helping someone to create. Exactly. And the thing is, is that they don't, what the things that people don't appreciate it, because if you just give me a service for free or you give it to me discounted, it's the, I'm not going to appreciate it, mm-hmm. you know, because it, it has to be that, that exchange of, of energy, that exchange of money. Otherwise it's like, Oh, that's nice. Jason hypnotize me. We'll be BFD, you know? <laughs> um, and not that you're not a great hypnotist, but do, do, do you know what I'm saying though? It's not the same thing because I didn't really exchange any energy. I didn't give anything up to get this. And that's what money is. Money's about trading one thing for another. And so if I just accept your gifts and I'm not giving anything back, I'm not going to appreciate in the same way. And then what does happen for on the other side for the entrepreneur is that you're giving away and giving away and giving away and you start becoming depleted and then either you become angry or resentful or you look around, you know, and you say, hey, how come Jason's making so much money and I'm not, you know? And so you get jealous, you get, you know, and, and then you're not, you're not coming from that place in your heart anymore. Oh, I mean, there's even a quick personal anecdote that kind of plays into this, that years ago, I had expressed an interest in a specific uh, training course, and I'll mm-hmm. simplify it here. And a friend of mine goes, oh, I have that. Here, borrow mine. And it sat on the shelf for two years. And then I knew the value in this training, and I'm at a convention, and I buy the exact course, to which the friend's going, why did you buy that? I gave that to you. He's like, because now I'll actually watch it. <laughs> That's right. No, but it, but it's it's so true. It really is because then you you had to sit there and you had to make the decision to like pull out your credit card and say, am I willing to trade whatever it is, you know, two hundred bucks, five hundred bucks, a thousand bucks, whatever, and say like, is this important enough for me to trade my money for this? Well, it's where too often people are collecting the ideas, collecting the premises, and you know, I, I'm sure you may run into this too. The the scenario of someone is in that early stage of launching their business, but they're yes. kind of caught up in those tasks where they're almost fooling themselves into productivity. They're three months into the business card design, uh, six yes. months oh, into yeah, the website yeah, yeah. and not yet having uh, worked with someone yet. That, dri- that drives me so crazy. You know, oh, thank when you. I, I see these entrepreneurs <laughs> and all these different Facebook forums and all this kind of stuff. And they're trying to figure out their logo and this thing and that thing. And they're not making a dime. And the thing, one of the things I really, really teach my, my, my people, my community is you got to start building that foundation. And it's about being able to kind of almost have the blinders on and ignore the bright, shiny stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, Because otherwise, you know, you're not going to make money and you're not going to have a profitable business. And then you're just going to be end up saying, okay, now I'm a hypnotist. But besides being a hypnotist, I think I'm going to take up feng shui and now I'm going to learn to be a hypnotist for non-smoking. And now I'm going to, well, that's not really making me money. So now I'm going to learn weight loss. And now I'm going to learn to yep, do um, yep. <laughs> shows. And, you know, so you keep getting certification after certification instead of just doing what you really got to do is, is learn how to start making some money. Although I want to take that back for a moment to look at here you were in in the Boston community now out there talking about tapping and it's where I always flash back to the Steve Martin line about be so good they can't ignore you. 
that mm-hmm. there's this aspect of you've got to bring your own passion to the work and to be there, let's say it's the networking event, it's the giving the presentation and yeah. to not be apologizing for the work that you do. It's like, no, this is what I do. This is the value that it has. Well, exactly. You know, and, and it's funny because now I take, kind of take it for granted because more, you know, more and more people, you know, do know about tapping. And I was just out speaking in, um, in Montreal and, you know, in front of like, I don't know, 350 women and, and partly through my presentation, I just said, okay, we're going to tap. And you know, I was like, <laughs> I'm just doing it. And, you know, and, and later on people came and said, Oh, I've heard about her. I've never heard about it and whatever. And it's just kind of like owning it and saying, I know how to do it. And I'm really great at it and boom, do it. And, and, and having some fun with it too. Um, but the thing is, is that it's really about so much of this is really understanding, you know, your own self-worth and what you bring to, to the community, what you bring to the world. And also as you're able to stand in your own light, that also allows other people to start being able to want to stand in their own light as well. So if you're always doing trades or doing discounts or playing it small or, or doing all sorts of other things, then you know, you're not an inspiration for anybody else. Absolutely. And, 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 you know, not everybody has to be like me, you know, speaking in front of, you know, whether it's hundreds or thousands of people, but at least be an inspiration for maybe your best friend or your kids or your partner or, or your husband or wife or something. So then tell me a little bit more about uh, taking it from the one to ones and now running the groups, running the retreats. Yeah. Because, because, you know, the beauty of it, and, and I'm sure you find the same thing, is that when it's our own business, so what, <laughs> I, I started having really, really fast success. And so when I started working with some of these coaches, they're all like, they want to make me mini-me's of them, you know? Mm-hmm. And I started to go down a little bit down that path. And then all of a sudden I said, wait a minute, this is not why I became an entrepreneur, to be a mini-you. And I just kind of like did a big, eh, you know? <laughs> and I just said, look, what's in my heart? Well, I love to travel. I, love, I was a flight attendant. I love to travel. I mean, like you heard me talk about my vacations. I want to start doing, so I've done retreats in Cancun and Costa Rica. I do them in Boston. And it's a way of, of doing stuff like that where I get to pull in the stuff I enjoy. So it's fun for me because if it's not fun, there's no point in it. And I, I love for me, I mean, it's understanding too how you like to work best because I'm not saying retreats are for everybody, but it's really understanding what's your favorite way to work, whether it's one-to-one, whether it's group, whether it's, you know, a thousand people, whether it's an online course, it's discovering your own genius and brilliance and doing it that way. And not, you know, I call it like swimming in your own lane. You know, what makes you the happiest? What lights you up the most? And then what's also going to bring in some money, right? Yeah, to look at it in terms of, again, there's not just one specific model. And um, tell, tell me if I'm correct in the assumption here that there is the experiment at times to go, well, let me only present something that I know I can do, mm-hmm. see what the demand is, see what the interest is, and that's what's going to direct the next step. Yeah, you know, and you, you, you can do it that way too, but I also think that passion and confidence attracts people. Yes. So when you're so excited about things, Um, like honestly, like when people work with me, I, you know, there's some people that, you know, they, they know tapping and that's why they, they work with me or they come to a retreat or one of my events. But honestly, most people come to me because they get results. They, they hear me, they, they trust me. And honestly, I could, and I don't mean this disrespectfully of them because that's not what I'm saying, but I could say, if you go in the corner and count backwards from 10, that's going to help you do this. And and they just, they just sense my passion and my confidence and the fact that I know what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and it's, it's the same thing. It's being able to understand that about yourself and, and understand that sometimes the steps unfold as you're going along. And there's an expression too, you know, build the plane while you fly it. And, you know, you're not always going to have all the answers in front of you. It's just having a lot of trust and faith that you're on the right path. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So then from there, taking it to the different audiences, is there a, is there a story that stands out of working with somebody that kind of came in from those previous expectations and then really took things off from there. Yeah. You know, I'll, I'll tell you, cause, um, one of my clients is also from Boston. She, um, and, and uh, when we first started working together, we, actually, we, so, <laughs> we, I met her at a networking event and it was like the very end of it. And I just, we just started talking and I said, I'm hosting an event next week. I said, you need to be there. And you know, sometimes you just feel that Jason, it's just like, you just say it and you're not being pushy or anything. It's just like your energy is just saying like, this person needs to be part of this. And that's what I said to her. 
And so anyway, she came to one of my retreats and, um, She'd been in business about five years and I'm not sharing any secrets because, you know, she shared this in a testimonial. Um, and so, you know, we figured out we averaged all the time, not just the time with, with her clients, but the before and after all the work you do behind the scenes, we figured out she's making 15 to $20 an hour and her family size was doubling. They were expecting twins. Oh, wow. So yeah, you know, so 15 to 20 not bucks busy at all. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's not going to cut it. So I helped her create some some bigger programs, you know, to under to really hone in on a niche to you know create some bigger programs, and so that was all good. And then we you know came up with some really great price points, so that would definitely amp her her income up. And then all of a sudden she said to me, "But Kate, you know nobody in my industry would ever charge that much money." And so that's you know a limiting belief. Um, I don't know if you guys deal with with limiting and core beliefs in, in hypnotism, but Absolutely, we deal with that. Yeah. yeah okay. Perfect. So you, you know what I'm talking about. So it was like nobody in my industry. So I had to use the mindset work, the tapping and all that to help her work through that. So that was great. You know, she was like, okay, I'm comfortable with that. And then all of a sudden she said, you know, she got this deer in her headlight in the headlights look saying, but, but, you know, I don't want my clients to get mad at me, which is a really huge core belief because, you know, back, back from infancy, we all have this basic need to be loved and so we, if we think anything is going to affect, you know, that someone won't love us or like us or get mad at us or hate us or something like that, that's going to stop us in our tracks and not let us move forward. So we had to do some even deeper mindset work that, that it would be okay for her to do this, that her self-worth and her, her identity would not be, would not crumble by her raising her prices. So um, as a result, so again, 15 to $20 an hour, been in business five years. She hit six figures that year. Um, and she keeps coming to my retreats. In fact, she just came to one in, when was it? In April. And cause now she's, you know, she's, she's basically her, her whole year is booked out. You know, she's exceeding her goal and she's beautiful. Been, and, and now she's like, but Kate, I'm feeling kind of stagnant. So, you know, how you get to those points, well, I'm feeling, you know, it's like, okay, now you're making, well, I'm feeling kind of bored. So <laughs> we, we had to kind of like shake things up again, you know? So, and that's part of the whole entrepreneurial thing, right? Because we are creatives and most of us don't want to keep, you know, we think, oh, my God, I can do this forever. But, you know, whether it's every year, or every couple of years, you know, we like to shake things up. Don't, don't you find that? Yeah. I mean, again, I, it, it's an interesting mix because I've had some people that I've uh, worked with myself that, you know, do reach that place where they go. But this is the one thing that makes me happy. And this is the success that I'm having with it. And, and there is some comfort in that. But again, to look at when it's the most successful, I'd say is often the time to really shake things up. You know, the mm -hmm. time to take those chances where, uh, to use, not, not to make it a gambling thing, but the gambling term of play with the house is money. I can yeah. throw out a brand new project and if it works, phenomenal. If it doesn't, eh, all right. I learned that. <laughs> well, yeah, you know, and, and I always tell my clients too, that you're either growing or you're dying. Yeah. You, know, you can't, you can't stay static. Some things have to be changing. Um, and especially, you know, in, in this whole transformational world. And it's funny, you know, you sit there and, and, uh, you know, as much as I'm a, you know, my, my brilliance is facilitating transformations. I'm always going through it. You know, I work with my own coaches and all that for my own stuff. And just when I sit there and say, oh, I figured it out, life's great. And, you know, kind of smoke my virtual cigarette, you know, and all that, <laughs> put my feet up. It's like, sure enough, damn, I'm going through it again, you know? Um, and, you know, it's just amazing how it does kind of happen that all of a sudden things get shooken up and it's like, okay, time to, time to make sense and figure this out again. Do you find that there's the challenge sometimes of the things that got you started are not the things you can keep doing? Yes and no, but, right. but sometimes, too, sometimes too. So yes, yes, in some ways, but also too, I find that sometimes I have to pull myself almost back to basics mm -hmm. of what, what my true brilliance was and you know, but it's, it's, it's a whole combination. It's, we could talk about this for like hours because, um, you know, it's just also uncovering that sometimes your where your brilliance is, is not necessarily where you expected your brilliance, or sometimes you take it for granted what your brilliance actually is. And then it's learning too how to actually verbalize what your brilliance is. So other people get it. What I want to highlight for people is something that I, I love. And when, when I hear this, it's, it's unfortunately rare for someone to have the confidence to call out. And as you're using the language, this is what your brilliance is mm -hmm. that, that I meet too many people that are almost uh, hiding from what their strengths are holding back from what that true ability is, as opposed to no, this is the one thing I do exceedingly well. This is the benefit that I share with people. And I'm really good at this. 
And I think people need to own that a whole lot more rather than almost apologizing for the work that they do. Exactly. And, and Jason, that's also part of charging what you're worth and setting boundaries. It's a, that's why the entrepreneurial world is so cool because it is so transformational. It's everything shifts everything and, and how you see yourself, how you value yourself, how you value your work, how you value your life. I mean, everything, it just all kind of plays in. And, and that's the beauty of it. I mean, what, what to me is so exciting for you when I think of you is that here you are doing this cool work and you've got these two young kids. I mean, how inspiring, you know, that they're able to like learn that from you. Oh, thank you. I like it. We're going to keep them around. (laughs) Put put them to work, right? (laughs) Well, we, uh, Claire has been in some videos that have gone out in emails in recent years. So (laughs) (laughs) kids got to go to college somehow. Uh, (laughs) no, but I love that aspect of, again, calling out the, this is what the strength is. This is what my skill is. And that's where I see a lot of that confidence really rising where, uh, I, I have people that I've worked with on a one-to-one basis on, you know, the entrepreneurial coaching and first phase becomes, okay, you're charging this, make it that. Well, I can't. Well, here's the results you're getting. Here's your books and books of testimonials. The value is already there. Yeah. And it's, it's being, it's being able to, to really recognize it and own it and just own it so solidly that you just can't even be knocked over with it. Absolutely. I'm curious to hear a little bit more about, uh, you do a program called Conversations to Clients. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so when I did business development, you know, just, just in a real quick nutshell, what, what that really involved is in the beginning, you know, I was given a list of nothing, right? You know, get mm-hmm. hired. And it's like a list of nothing. It's like, Kate, go out and cold call and find some business. And I had to learn how to do that, how to figure out my marketing message, um, how to be, you know, be able to talk to decision makers, how to figure out price points, how to overcome objections, how to get repeat business, how to, um, get referrals and, and, and on and on and on. So very much like a, um, um, like, like an entrepreneur. And what I discovered as an entrepreneur is that selling someone else's widgets is a whole lot easier than selling your own. Yes. And so I, I found that in my own business that I work with two types of entrepreneurs, um, just to kind of put them in, a, in two little like funnels. And one is a type who's like me, who came from a corporate background, who understands sales, who has really has no problem with it, except now they have to sell themselves and they find it really difficult. And the other is the type who just thinks sales is icky and gross. And I just thought I could be just really, really good at what I do. And I'd have a line of clients. It's like, if I get the certification in hypnotism, or I get the certification in mm-hmm. feng shui or whatever that it is, I'm going to have a line of clients automatically out the door. I mean, that's what, I don't know about you, but that's what I was promised when I got one of my first certifications. <laughs> <laughs> which is of course not true. And so what I teach in this event is how to get more people to say yes. So from a marketing standpoint, I teach all that. I teach, you know, the, the kind of the, the script, um, what to say of why you're saying it, how you're saying it, when you're saying it, um, how to figure out your magic price point, how to charge what you're worth, um, how to overcome objections, um, how to deal with rejection because it will happen. People will say no and how to not let it make you, you know, pull the blanket over your head and go hide for years. But what I'm really focusing, what makes this really, really different than your typical sales event is because I have what, what makes me really unusual. I have this really solid business background as well as a really, really solid mindset background. So I pull in mindset in every aspect of the teachings. So it's not just talking about objections like the, you know, okay, well, I don't have someone saying I don't have the money, but also getting into your own money story, because unless you're able to shift your money story, you can't release any, you can't help a client, a prospective client through their money objection, because otherwise you just get caught up in their story. So I really get into what's going on in, you know, your head as the entrepreneur um, to help you get through all this. And as a result, that's what's helped my clients do exceed exceedingly well. So that's what my live event is about. Um, that's coming up this June. Excellent. And I love the, there's the terminology of it that you really are engaging in a conversation. You're talking to the person, not just at the person that it's that, it's that give and take that's helping to on one way, qualify the ones that are a fit. And I'm sure in some way, uh, disqualify or set aside the ones that are not quite at that yet ready place. 
Exactly. Exactly. Give them to the universe, right? (laughs) (laughs) I'll say, call Jason. I'm not the right (laughs) one. Although I'm curious to ask you this, because this is, I mean, this is a big chunk of my business and this is something that uh, email marketing has really, you know, put put the strength of in uh, the years that I've been at this, that Mm -hmm. a good chunk of my people will be the ones who call and perhaps the timing isn't quite the fit, but then suddenly two, three years later, to begin the conversation with what's different now, mm-hmm. um, I, I'm here on a you know business trip at the moment and returned a couple of calls, and it's actually people who have been in my systems now for a couple of years. And to be able to have that conversation that now, here's where they are, here's why they're ready to jump in, and you're already starting off that process with that foot in the door, which when that rapport is already there, the story is already in motion. And now here's that catalyst for change. Yeah, exactly. And and it makes a huge, huge thing. And, and, you know, it's people also too being able to step in, you know, they're, and sometimes people will kind of do that dance. It's like, okay. And then they step out and step in, step out. And, and people either make a decision, you know, either out of, out of love or fear. And so either so drawn to, that they have to do this thing or else the fear like, oh, like for me initially in starting my business, the fear was, Oh shit, I don't want to go back to corporate. Mm-hmm. Um, and, but when you're able to keep that relationship going and, and have that conversation with somebody, so it isn't like, um, like I've seen some people do it, Jason, and you probably have too, where it's almost like a bullying type of conversation yes. to get the person to say yes. And the problem is when it becomes that is that you're really kind of closing the door and, Yes, you, you know, I'm not saying you want to just them go like, okay, call me whenever you're ready because it's like, yeah, you'll never hear from them. Mm -hmm. Um, (laughs) but it's, you know, so that's where you also have to learn to be firm and take a stand for that person too, because if you don't take a stand for them, nobody ever will. And sometimes you almost have to, to, to help them with that, you know, to give them that kick in the butt. But also the thing is understanding that you can't care about their results more than they do. Yeah. That, that's a, that's a huge thing for the, the person who's the, the maybe it'd be nice to. Exactly, exactly. You know, and, 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 you know, truthfully, in the beginning, I I had some people like that, too, because it's like, I just knew, like, oh, my gosh, I can help you so much. And then you realize, you know what, and again, it's about setting boundaries, I can't care about this more than you do. Right. Uh, And you can't, because otherwise, again, and, and I've seen so many people like, I don't know what it's like in the hip. Well, a hypnotist, I know that there's some people who say like, hey, you know, um, I'll help you, cl- you know, you pay X fee till, till we clear out this issue. And in tapping, there's, you know, we use this, the SUD scale. And so um, very often what happens in the beginning of a tap for a tapping practitioner is that, you know, you ask the person where they are, like, you know, zero to 10. And that even though the person signed up for, let's say, an hour long session, that an entrepreneur, that a, a tapping practitioner will stay on with that person till they get to zero. Well, you could be on with that person for four hours. Mm-hmm. So it's about, you know, learning to, you know, about setting those boundaries. So, you know, to be able to, to, uh, you know, to work with those per- person and, and help them in a way, but not give yourself away too much too. So that's kind of what I'm saying the long way around, but it's about learning how to not give away too much of yourself because then you just end up very depleted. Right. And it's, it's that balance between getting the process in motion, but also giving the strategies to go, here's how we continue the story. Here's how you strengthen it further on your own. And it's where some of the, some of our language patterns in terms of great was, yes, we keep looping this. It's going to keep going down. As you're noticing this, here's what's going to happen instead. Exactly, 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 exactly. And, and so, you know, when people are thinking of this, it's, it's both short term, long term, you know, everything you're doing, you want to see how it really affects you. It isn't just like a single session. It's, you know, there's that expression, the way you do anything is the way you do everything. Oh yeah. Yeah. I live by that. And. The variation I've always used is the, the way you are here is the way you are everywhere else. Yeah, 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 yeah exactly, exactly. Well, it's not that the, the motivator has to be pain. You know, the motivator could be, again, as you mentioned before, moving towards that love, moving towards yeah. that pleasure, that this is something. I, I've met people that would live by the phrase of, well, the person who was calling for something, they're not in pain enough. It's like, well, that's not always the motivator. It could be one of the motivators, but not necessarily the only one. Exactly. And also everybody has a different frame of reference mm-hmm. of what, of what pain is. Right. Yeah. Although I always flash back to the story of a woman who called me up and she goes, yeah, could you hypnotize me? So I sleep on my back and I'm ho- <laughs> having to pause and go, 
is there a medical thing going on? She goes, no, <laughs> just now that I'm in my early 40s, the wrinkle from the pillow stays in my face a little bit longer. Yeah. And, um, you know, if I slept on my back, that wouldn't be an issue. And it's the one and only time I just slipped and went, okay, so like my session fee is like $400. And she goes, oh, God, it's not worth that. What about public speaking? I'd rather spend the money on that. It's like, okay, yeah, come on in. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, 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 right? Yeah. So. But it's just it's just people's where their pain point is, right? Right. And again, getting to the place of what's the thing that needs the attention the most as opposed to the, you know, well, it'd be nice if this was taken care of, which to look at the needs that people have, whether it's the whether it's the coach, the counselor, the hypnotist, the therapist, or even I mean, expand all of this out to, I'm sure, you know, to the photographer, to the architect, to the real estate agent. It's the same conversation. It's just, it's the same, same, same for all of us. And it's, it's being able to understand that. And then if that person's the right fit, then being able to guide them again, if it's the right fit to a yes. Yes. Yeah. So I'd love to chat for a bit about uh, your book that just came out. Oh yeah. My book, I'm so excited. And the book is Go or Don't Go. And it's the complete guide to accelerate your success and tap into your brilliance. And the book means Look a lot. Look at you combining all the themes in the title. Look at that. <laughs> of course Nicely I am. Nicely done. <laughs> <laughs> and the book, the book um, is actually my second book. My first book was um, an international bestseller. So the, this book um, it means an awful lot to me because I've been thinking about writing this one for a while. And my dad passed away a year ago, Jason. Um and I was with him when he took his final breaths, you know, holding one of his hands. And you just go through back back to what I was saying earlier in this interview about, um, you know, being broken open and when things happen and making these decisions. And, you you know, you realize that life is never going to be the same. You know, I, I love my dad. He was an amazing man. And I just made the decision like I have to show up even in a bigger way. And here I thought I was and I was like, nope, not big enough. And and it propelled me to write the book and, um, um, you know, sharing stuff, information I wanted to share for a while. So um, I'm really excited. It was actually went um, live on Amazon a, a few weeks ago. And then this week um, at one of the local bookstores um, in my area, we're doing a book launch. So I'm very, very excited about it. Awesome. Awesome. Well, this is this has been fantastic. Where can people find out more about you online? If they go to my website, katebeaters.com and find lots of stuff, lots of good info. And, you know, if I can help anybody, the um, best thing to do is email my team, info at katebeaters.com. And they're happy to um, to help you the best way that they can. Awesome. And we'll put links to that over in the show notes at the Work Smart Hypnosis website as well. Kate, it's been awesome having you on here. Thank you so much. It's been a lot of fun. And um, I'm, I'm so glad we got to do this tonight. Jason Lenat here once again, and as always, thank you so much for interacting with this program, for leaving your reviews on Facebook, on the iTunes listing, basically everywhere you can find this program and sharing it as well. Uh, once again, check out Kate's website at katebeaters.com, as well as head over to Hypnotic Business Systems. Dot com. It's the all-access pass to my hypnosis business training library. You get marketing materials that are done for you and ready to go, how to get testimonials from your clients, how to build referral engines, all available to you starting at just $47. Check that out, hypnoticbusinesssystems.com. See you soon. Thanks for listening to the Work Smart Hypnosis Podcast at worksmarthypnosis.com. Hey, it's Jason here, and reading is lame and videos are awesome, so do this right now. Go ahead and click subscribe right here inside of this video, and that will link you to my YouTube channel, and you will be the first to find out as new information is shared here online. Click subscribe now, stay in touch. I look forward to hearing of your success very soon.